the last album I had out was Soundtrack of Two of a Kind, and that was about two years ago. And then before that, my last studio album was Physical, and that was about four years ago. Is there any reason for the break being so long? Um, I just took time for myself, really. I took, you know, a bit of time off. I got married and just had a good time. <laughs> she didn't go in the studio for a while. Why did it take a, mo a year or more to make this current Soul Kiss album? It took a, a long time to find the songs. And I got married in the middle and went on an extended honeymoon. And then we had to find the next batch of songs. And also then there was remixing and revoicing. And, you know, it takes quite a time to make an album. Is this album technically more perfect than perhaps some of the previous ones? I think John is always very conscious of technical things, so, and he had a very fine um, engineer this time, Alan Sides. I love his initial A side. We hope that's a good omen. And um, <laughs> he took a lot of time mixing and getting really great sound. It sounds really nice. You don't think that there's perhaps a danger of losing the human side of Olivia New from John because of, that's why people buy your records? Oh, I don't think so. I think um, instrumentation is a fashion, really, and it changes every six months or so. Different sounds come in, but the you know my vocals are still there, and I'm still singing, so it doesn't. I don't think that makes any difference. I mean, if you want to do pop music, then you have to you know keep up with the new sounds of pop music. If I want to do something with an orchestra, then that's a whole other area. There are ten new songs on the album. Were the songs all selected in advance, or were they picked out as you went along? Uh, we had about four songs um, pre-selected when we first started recording, and then when we finished that batch of four, then we found another couple, and Soul Kiss and Toughen Up, which are the first two singles, were the last two songs that we recorded, the very last. So we thought we had a single, then we found a new one. Oh, this is better, and it kind of just went that way. So one at a time, basically. You work with, I think, a lot of the same songwriters as you've worked with previously. Yeah, we have a kind of a Australian mafia over here. <laughs> we have John Farrow, who's my producer and has been for the last ten years or so, and he writes, he's written or co-written three, uh, three or four songs on the album. Billy Thorpe, who's another Australian um, singer, who, songwriter, who's written one with John. Stevie Kipner, who wrote Physical for me, um, and Heart Attack, he wrote a song. And then Tom Snow, who wrote Make a Move on Me, wrote a song, and Mark Goldenberg, who wrote um, one of the Pointer Sister songs. I haven't recorded his song before, but I did Soul Kiss of his. And Terry Britton, who's written quite a few of Tina Turner's hits, who used to play, when I was um, living in England and doing backups for Cliff Richard, he used to do backups for Cliff Richard too. So I did one of his songs too. You mentioned that you did get married while you were making the album. Do you care to tell people what the ceremony was like? It was very simple and it was in my lounge at home and I had fireplaces going and candles everywhere and lots of um, pretty lights and it was formal. Everyone wore tuxedos because I felt like it should be special. I had a string quartet and it was just family and friends and um, it was lovely. It was really lovely. I think all your fans know you've always wanted to have children. Are you looking forward to becoming a mum? Yes, I am, very much. Um, I think it's going to be the most exciting thing that's ever happened. Um, for, for my friends and my sister and everybody that's had children, they'll say it's, it's everything else pulls by comparison, so I'm very excited about it. Looking forward to it. When is it due? In February, a little Aquarian. Do you... Do you care whether it's a boy or a girl? No, as long as it's healthy. I don't, I don't mind what it is, but as long as it's a boy or a girl. One of those. <laughs> 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 Will you necessarily encourage or discourage he or her from, uh, him or her from um, going into show business? No, not if they show talent. I think if, um, if my child showed talent um, and was really serious about doing it, I'd, I'd encourage them. But I've had a great time in show business, so I haven't. I don't. I wouldn't discourage them. It's been wonderful. You, it's fair to say, and would you agree that Greece was a turning point in changing your image? Yes, Greece was a definite turning point in my career because I'd had this very um, set image, very kind of you know, what they used to call me white bread, milkshake, all that stuff, middle of the road. And in Greece, I got a chance to be a little bit bad. And even though I was very nervous about it, 
it was probably the best thing I ever did because I was accepted that way and it, it, get, it let me be a little braver. You pushed the image into a, an even more mature area with physical. Was Thank that an you. even greater risk at the time, did you feel? Yeah, physical, um, I was very excited about it and then about two weeks before it came out, I got panicked and I rang Roger Davies, my manager, I said, Roger, we can't put this out, it's going to kill my career, they're going to hate me. I was in a real tiz about it and everyone calmed me down and said it's going to be fine and we made the video a little bit humorous so it wasn't taken too seriously and again it was another risky thing but it, it paid off again well so it was a good thing I, I didn't chicken out all the way. Have all these ch re <clears throat> changes always represented the real you or has it been as a lot of performers always say oh that's an image I, I rep represent it's not really me? Um, I think there's a little bit of, of all those things in, in, in me and in everybody. I think everyone has those cheeky sides and everything. I don't, it's not all me. And obviously you wouldn't want to project um, everything that is you or only project everything that is you um, when, you, when you perform. Because perform is as it sounds, it's performing and you're putting across an image and an idea and every song has its own identity. Well, we've discussed the changes that you've made in your career. Does Soul Kiss, you think, represent a further change or a further maturing of the image? Yes, I think it, um, it does represent a change. It's, um, well, I hope it does. It's, I hope every album that I do something a little different and a little more progressive than I did the last time, because my tastes change all the time. Musically, it's more, what, electric, electronic? It's more, well, I guess it's got, you know, a lot of the, because every couple of years, Sounds change in music, so it's you know it's got a lot of um, modern sounds on it, and um, the songs are more up tempo I think than I've done before. Generally, it's a more up album than I'm probably known for. Visually, the gatefold sleeve, the red picture, yes, that are is quite sexy. It's probably the most provocative thing you've done. Would you agree? It is. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I like it. I think it's. Uh, it's quite a nice picture myself. Was there any particular thought process which brought you to deciding to make that pose? It is actually because when we did the cover, the cover's in black and white, and we thought, and speaking of that, this is it. We decided what would be the, um, the best contrast, and red seemed to be the obvious answer. Do you, where do you want to go musically? Do you want to sort of stay on the same path or do you want to do something radically different just for a change? Just like, like Barry Manilow did, like Strath and Yeah. Musically there are a lot of things I want to do for fun and this is, I feel this is what I'm going to be wanting to do next. I've always wanted to do an oldies album but um, a lot of people have done them recently so I'll have to wait a little bit. There are a lot of, I'd like to do another country album, I'd like to do an album of songs that I've written. These are all things that I'm going to do one day, it's just finding the time and actually, you know, doing are you, it. Are you writing many songs these days? I've got a lot half finished. <laughs> I don't seem to get them fin I tried to write something for this album, but I didn't get it finished. So I will, though, one day. I've written, before this, I've written about one song per album. This, this one, I didn't come up with anything. So what other things do you hope to get into outside of singing? Well, I've already started two things. One um, is that I'm... Uh, my girlfriend Nancy Gould and myself created a story for a movie and we sold it to Paramount and so I'm going to produce it and hopefully star in it next year, which is a comedy, so I'll be involved in the other side, which is fun for me and creating the whole thing was really exciting. And also I have a, um, a store called Koala Blue which sells all Australian goods and we're branching out in that and opening other stores and doing a clothing line. So. I've got, you know, other things that are fun and interesting and use your, your um, creativity in other areas. Uh, let's run through the tracks, Olivia. The opening track and I think the second, no, you tell us it's the second single. The opening track is Toughen Up. Yes, Toughen Up was written by Terry Britton and Graham Lyle. Terry Britton has written a lot of hits for, t uh, for Tim Turner recently and I've known him a long time. He used to be in a group in Australia called The Twilights and used to back Cliff and um, so we were, we were looking for I think maybe we just needed one more song for the album we called Terry and he came up with this one. And it's great, I think it's going to be the second single. What's the feel? Um, reggae. It's kind of a reggae feel, which is exactly what I was looking for, so it's perfect. It's the first time you've done a reggae kind of track. Here's mine. Plus the reggae one.
But not the last. But not the last. Second track, Soul Kiss. Soul Kiss was written by Mark Goldenberg. I haven't recorded any of his songs before, but he has written um, Automatic for the Pointer Sisters, and he's written a couple of hits for Linda Ronstadt. And Soul Kiss was the, the very last song that we recorded for the album. And um, we had it kind of as a standby, and I fell in love with it. Roger brought it to me first, and I like it, and it's the first single. What's the feel of that track? It's kind of a uh, moody, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, soul, sensual kind of thing, you know. Queen of the Publication was written by John Farrah, Stevie Kipner and Tom Snow, three guys who I've done a lot of their material, they're great writers, all of them. And um, it's about um, the press, really. It's kind of our own little jive at the press and, and what, what they can do or what they think they do. And uh, this was a fun song to do because of that, because it's something that you have to deal with all the time. You're and it's very up. You're, you're a reporter in the song, in fact. Yes, I play a, a reporter, a queen of the publication who thinks that she has the right to invade everyone's privacy and that's all part of, you know, what you have to put up with. Do you feel that you had to put up a lot of that? I think anybody in the, in the public eye has to. It's part of... Part of um, Part of price of success, they say, for a lack of privacy. Yeah. Probably the thing I dislike the most about it is that. Well, the only thing I really dislike about it is that. Have you got to the point where you've accepted it, or is it still annoying you? You have to accept it, otherwise you drive yourself mad. Yeah. Fourth track, Emotional Tangle. Emotional Tangle was written by John Farrah and Billy Thorpe. Billy Thorpe is another Aussie. We have an Australian mafia in Los Angeles. And Billy Thorpe was a big star in Australia <clears throat> when I was um, out there. He was a very big star on television. He's now living here. And um, this is a, a very beautiful song, very pretty, and the lyrics are very powerful, I think. Culture Shock was uh, another song by Stevie Kipner. This is another song that I had uh, a few second thoughts about recording because it's about a triangle, a love triangle. But... Um, I know a lot of people who have been in this situation and I think if you haven't been in this situation you can understand what it's like to care about two people. I think a lot of people have been in that position so I went ahead and did it and I love, I love the song, I think it's really great. Moth to a Flame is another credit to Stevie Gibner and um, his co-writer on this one was an English gentleman, Paul Bliss, who wrote Heart Attack. They both wrote Heart Attack for me before. and. Um, the lyrics of this song, I think, are very special, and this is a very, um, it's kind of got a police -y feel to it, I think, this, this record. And a lot of guitars, great guitar stuff. Steve Lucas to play guitar on it. And um, this is quite a hard song to sing, actually, because there's a lot of, um, what do you call it, timing is quite difficult in this song, so it took a lot of breath. <laughs> the most difficult song? Um, they're all, actually, none of the songs on this album were easy to sing. They might. Hopefully they sound like they were, but they weren't. They were quite difficult. Which is good, because it's nice to have a challenge. Overnight Observation is one of my favourites on the album because it's got a lot of humour to it. And it was written by John Farrah and Tom Snow. And it's about um, a girl going, to, or me, but a girl going to a doctor's office and, and the doctor tries to, 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 I can't talk, to seduce her in the office, which does happen to people and um, it's called Overnight Observation I think it's a lot of fun. Love You Are Great, How Was I, which is a terrific title, it was written by John Farrah and Tom Snow and I was very lucky to be able to sing this with Carl Wilson from the Beach Boys because um, John and I have always been great fans of the Beach Boys so it was really nice to be able to ask if they would sing with us because years ago when we were in Australia John used to sing all the Beach Boys songs and I used to sing backups and everything so it was a real kick. But the song also had to be sung by someone who'd been around for a long time because it's all about the fact that we're getting old and decrepit. No. It's about the fact that um, things have changed and love you were great, but how was I? It's, um, it's a nostalgic kind of song with a 50s kind of feel. And Christopher Cross did backups with um, Carl Wilson on it. It's got a really lovely sound. Certainly got a beach, but it's almost like John's tribute to Brian Wilson. Yeah. The very Beach Boys song. Yeah. Uh, next one is by Steve Kipner and Tommy Emmanuel. Driving music. 
use a lot of kind of special effects on, on this song. It's about a female cab driver and uh, what it's like to be driving around all night. Um, final track, The Right Moment. The Right Moment, um, actually Matt brought to my attention, Matt is my husband, and this song was by Jerry Rafferty and it was on an album and he played it to me one day and I got goosebumps from it because it was, it's got wonderful lyrics and the orchestration is really pretty so this is one of my favourites. Electric um, is a song by Michael Landau and Tom Key. Michael Landau was a guitarist on my physical tour. He's a wonderful musician. And unfortunately, it didn't make the um, album. I believe it's going to be on the CDs and some of the cassettes in Europe. And it's a fun song. It's really, it's, a, it's called Electric and that's what it is. It's just a very electrical sounding. John Farr has been my producer for the last 10 years. We've made about 13 albums together. And I've known him since I was um, 15. He was a couple of years older in Australia on a teenage pop show called The Go Show. And um, he, he produced it. At his, he has a beautiful studio at home and um, he's a wonderful producer and very extremely talented writer and he's written for me. He wrote um, Hopes He Devoted to You, Magic, You're the One That I Want, Help, 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 there's been so many. Sam. Sam. Um, to name but a few. He's have you never been mellow? So much, have you ever been mellow? All my favourites actually John has written. <laughs>